Welcome to the Student Sector Spotlight Podcast, brought to you by the Humber Outreach Programme. Yeah. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi, Sophie. Um, for everyone listening or watching, today um, I am interviewing Sophie Clare, who is an actress and is actually based in Hull, which is in the Humber region, for anyone that's listening a bit further afield. Um, and we're going to have a chat about auditions. So thank you so much for, for joining me today. No problem. Yeah, this is going to be good, exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess if you just want to kind of introduce yourself, maybe talk a little bit about where you're originally from, like qualifications, mm -hmm. um, a little bit about that first, like your background, I guess. My background. So um, I am Sophie Clay, also known as Sophie Thompson. <laughs> um, yep. I had to change my name um because my name was already taken by an Olivier award-winning actress so we can aspire um uh -huh. so yeah I um, am known in the industry as Sophie Clay um and I am originally from the sort of Wakefield Barnsley area um and I went to college in Pontefract um and I did A levels I did A level drama music and English language and biology oh. <laughs> that was a curveball which a curve didn't go, it didn't go so well <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah so that's where I did my A-levels and then I went to the University of Hull to do drama and theatre studies uh, and that is where I got my BA in drama and theatre studies and then I um, went into the industry. Pretty awesome. Much. Mm. Why did you pick Hull? Is, was there a reason? Yeah so when uh, I was applying many moons ago um, I wasn't actually quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, I knew it wanted, I wanted to be uh, creative. I wanted to be in the sort of creative industry but I wasn't sure what avenue that was mm -hmm. um, and when I was looking at courses and uh, I did look at like just acting courses, drama schools, things like that, but I was like oh I'm not sure is that, do I want to commit to just that? I don't know because I really really didn't know which where I wanted to sort of channel mm -hmm. it all um, and Hull at the time was offering a really diverse course in theatre and drama studies. So um, you went, it, you, you, when you went, it, the offer was that you could, you could do acting, you could do uh, physical theatre, all the sort of perform, performing side of it. But yep. then you had the opportunity to learn the production side of it. So if you wanted to learn how to produce, if you wanted to learn how to um, stage manage or um, design direct anything everything across the board of of um, the jobs that are available in in working in theatre and um, you you had an opportunity to have a go at all of them um, yeah. and for me at that time because I wasn't certain on what I wanted to do having that like plethora of options was like okay this is great because I can I can have a little go at everything see mm -hmm. if I like it or have a go at stuff that I go mm, I, don't, I don't think I will like that and then realize oh actually I've learned a lot from that side of things and I do like a little bit of that you know um so that's what was great about Hull yeah um and why I decided to go there and when I did go there I did do everything. <laughs> yeah, had, yeah. Uh, you know, you've got three years of um, of a playground, really, um, which was um, brilliant, and I learned so, so, so much. Um, and there's a lot of skills that I learned, a lot of um, knowledge given that really helped when you stepped out into the real world, into into this industry, going, oh, okay, I understand. I understand why things are done that way or I understand what that opportunity means or whatever because I, I, I had the opportunity to play with that when I was at uni. 
That's cool. And and I know that like from a bit of my own experience, there's quite a few theatre companies that are in Hull, that are Hull based, that went mm-hmm. to Hull University. And that's not just actors, that's like directors and producers and, you know, mm-hmm. stage managers. And so people have kind of stayed in the area. And I guess that's the same for you. Um, yeah. is that is that part of the reason that you stayed locally do you think yeah so when I was in my third year um, a variety of humans <laughs> came came back who were prior students at Hull Uni doing drama and mm-hmm. um, they'd been away doing various different things maybe they'd gone to drama school maybe they'd done just you know a bit of work or whatever but they'd got back in touch with each other because they'd They'd found each other at uni and they'd gone away. They'd experienced the world a little bit and went, hang on, let's let's all come back together in Hull um, and give it a go at creating our own theatre company. And I think, um, and so this is Middle Child Theatre Company and I was part of that um, founding, founding members and company members there. Um, and I think that is a direct result of going to Hull Uni, having that experience and ability to um, learn all the roles that are required to create a company. Um, it, we fe- felt confident that we could do that. Um, so yeah, so when I left um, left uni, I started Middle Child with uh, these other guys. Um, and we've gone from there. Yeah, that's great. And then obviously you also are an actress as well mm-hmm. as being, you know, founding member of Middle Child. So yeah. do you, is there like, you know, because you hear constantly about you need to kind of be in London in order to make it as an actress or an actor mm-hmm. or whatever. And you've obviously stuck at kind of staying in Hull. Has that like ever impacted you or are you happy you stayed here regardless of Middle Child? But as you as an actress, like, mm. is that something that's, you know... So really, yeah so I think it's a really interesting um idea and I would almost go as far to say a slight myth that you have to be in London to succeed as an actor mm-hmm. um I there are uh, many actors based all over the country and for me um it's it's actually probably been better for me to stay up north. Um, just for me personally, everybody has a sort of different um, a different journey and things. But it's meant I've um, I've managed to work locally. There's potentially a lot more opportunities, and maybe I'd like to say l- less competition for those opportunities. There's still obviously competition; it is still there. Um, but the, there's the, there are local companies. There's a lot of local theatre companies in Hull. You've got regional theatres that you can be working for locally, um, or you know a little bit further afield. But not all work exists in London. Um, and in fact, you know you're available then to 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 go touring to do whatever it is that sort of comes your way. Um, and um, I think. Uh, financially as well it, it, there's a benefit to being up north rather than you know based in London paying high high stuff meaning that you're having to work these extra jobs these waitressing these what you know bar jobs whatever it is and not allowing and um, being able to have enough time to look for auditions for prepping mm. for for other work or um, you know have the ability to have a job that's flexible for you to go away and do work when you when you get a six month contract I guess we've you know talked about about a bit about your background and stuff but um I guess it what's the process for you in terms of auditioning first or or finding out about auditions let's start with that like how how would somebody go about finding out about auditions okay um so I think there's a variety of ways it's there's no set way of of doing this but um I am a member of Spotlight which um you Mm -hmm. subscribe to as a performer um and um it's essentially got it it is where people companies film companies tv uh theatre they put up their their jobs so when they've got um 
uh, projects coming up and roles that they need people to be auditioning for there'll be like a jobs board on this yeah. on spotlight so you can go through <clears throat> and filter through them all and, and also have a filter on because you put in um your information as well so um you know your age what what your hair color is your eye color height all that sort of stuff um and your qualifications your interests your skills and then and this jobs board can filter jobs that are uh, more tailored towards what you would be applicable for um so that that is a great um a great place to be finding jobs, to be finding work, to be finding out where these auditions are, who they're for, um, and the, the companies that have work available. Um, so you can apply through that. Um, another platform that is quite prominent with um, sharing jobs that are coming up is Twitter. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so I, I think, um, Particularly in this industry, a lot of um, a lot of work comes up on on some social media stuff. Um, so I think following um, companies that you enjoy the work of. Uh, like if you'd gone out yeah. and seen companies that you you go, oh, I really like what they do. That's really cool. Following those guys, following regional theatres, following mm -hmm. filmmakers, whatever it is, that quite often they'll put up call outs um and say we're looking for x y and z we're right. looking for this kind of actor we're looking for someone who has experience in this so so keeping your eye on that's really good as well mm -hmm. um and I, along the thing of like finding companies that you like i think looking on their websites yeah. quite often they'll have um uh, you know opportunities or whatever on their websites that you can you can look in and you see what they've got coming up um another thing that's really useful is just um spending a bit of time again thinking of people that you admire people that you want to work with people that you're interested in um what they create or how they work or who they work for in terms of what audience do they work for are we interested in that um and um dropping them an email yeah dropping them an email and introducing yourself hi i'm sophie i'm a whole based actor um i'm really interested in the work that you're doing i've got experience in this um and i'd really um love to meet with you or i'd love to um, if you could let me know if there's any opportunities coming up, because they might not have stuff at the minute when you're looking at it, but things will always come up. It yes. just depends where they're at in their like production cycle, as it were. Um, so, yeah, just getting in touch with people, directors that you like, other actors as well. I think that's um, uh, a great thing is 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 speaking to that community, other actors, other performers, um, and just asking questions <laughs> yeah. you know who who do you who who have you enjoyed working for like oh uh, have you heard of anything coming up or anything like that there's a real community there of of um people with a lot of knowledge and keeping a nice open mind for that's really good rather than feeling everyone's your competition like feeling yeah. everyone is like a um uh, a team player you know you can find out a lot and and get a lot of advice and contacts from people mm -hmm. um and and you know if you have got actors that you you work with or that you're friends with or whatever then they can always put in a good good word that like, i've worked with this person on this thing to you know another another company that you're getting in touch with yeah great presumably there's a cost element to spotlight as well as uh, yeah there so, is there is um so with spotlight you um you subscribe to it yeah. so it's 172 pounds 50 a year which sounds like an awful lot of money and it is but that can be broken down as well you can pay monthly or um whatever okay. it is You've got options. um and but i think that the thing that is good to frame it in your brain is that if that if being on there gets you at least one job, you've already paid it off. Yeah, absolutely. I can see you that. Know? Um, so, and and it's really worth being on there. Another thing I'll mention is like, if 
um, someone's been told about you as well, or like, um, you know, them as companies, people, employers are looking, that's where they'll go to. Mm -hmm. That's where they'll look for people. So it's really important, I feel, that you're on there so people can see what you do, can see what you've done um, and and have a way of getting in touch with you. Um, I will say that there's not just Spotlight as well. There's like Mandy, um, okay, which a few works ways. in a similar way. There are other platforms um, that have as, work in a very similar way. Off, you know, a, a platform for employers to put up their jobs and look for people and for you yeah. to apply for stuff. And yeah. um, so there are other ones out there. Um, but Spotlight seems to be the sort of the main the big one the main one and a trusted one as well because yes. that is important I think in this industry there are um jobs that get put up that and that are not paid well you, you're not looked after and you've got to be really careful as well with with not just saying yes to everything mm. <laughs> um because there are some jobs there that are not the the they're not um uh well facilitated or supported and um so spotlight filters definitely filters that out so you know that you've got a safer casting network great that's good to know because mm. yeah like you say you could put yourself in some you know not good situations if you're not careful um so what's the process so you, say you've gone onto spotlight or you've had you know through somebody or there's a you've gone on a website of a company that you like and you think okay I, I think I'm suitable for a role mm -hmm. what's the actual the, the initial kind of application process to being like hi I'm here and I think I'd be great for this through spotlight I guess through I mean I, there'll be multiple different routes presumably yeah it, but... yeah, it really varies I mean on on spotlight you'll you'll go on this sort of jobs board you'll see oh that's the one I want this is this is the job I think I'd be really good for you click on that um, and then at the bottom, there's a little bit where you can put a message to right. the casting director or whoever it is. Um, and then you as, and then you set press send and it sends them your full CV yeah, and so all the information you. that you've already got on there. So yeah. that just gets sent straight through to them. Yeah. Um, and but then, you know, if you find in other jobs through companies websites or through Twitter or whatever else, it can vary. So um, I think it depends on the project. It depends what they're requiring from, from you. Um, some people are literally like, just send us a headshot, email us at this. So you'll take their email and you send your headshot across. Some people have um, an application process. So they'll want you to um, maybe write a little bit about why you're interested in being involved in this project, what experience you have, or um, what ideas you have. Um, so you'll have to sort of spend a bit of time writing that, essentially like a cover letter, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then other ones will require that and maybe a self-tape of some mm. kind. Um, yeah. You know, a, um, a monologue or a song, they'll need to hear you sing, or it really depends on what, you, what you're going for, yeah. what kind of project you're going to work for. Um, I think yeah so it just depends and and that uh, it's a good thing with spotlight though that you, it's sort of prepared for you so when you apply it's you've got that kind of stuff ready yeah. and as long as you're presumably updating it each time you maybe been in yeah, yeah part of a new project and yeah yeah and you'll have video you have like video show reels on there and um, yeah, your headshots so, will be on there as well yeah so you've you've got an opportunity to put up um headshots Mm. Um, so that's where people uh, need to know what you look like yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can also put up production shots so if you've been in stuff in the past and um, photographs have been taken you can get those put up as well yeah. um, and then um, there's also excuse me that was the postman um, <laughs> uh, there's also yet yeah, little sections where you can put up a show reel so if you've got any footage of you um in shows in tv in film or you know even if you've just recorded yourself doing a monologue or something like that mm -hmm. um you can put that up 
on there and it's quite important because a lot of the time when people are looking through your stuff it's great that they can see a picture it's great that they can see what you've done but often they want to know what you move and what you sound like um so just having a little bit of footage um uh is is really useful yeah great that's good um so yeah so say you see you offered a an audition mm. and again I'm, I'm presuming this totally depends on on the project that you're going for but is there a kind of standard thing that happens within this or is it completely different with the process again uh from my experience and uh, I will say that my experience is predominantly in theatre yeah. um so the the may be very different processes if you are just going up for um a film job or a TV job or something like that. Yeah. Um, but my, from my experience, predominantly in theatre, it can really vary. Um, so it's dependent again on what um, what project you're going up for. Um, uh, but I will say each time they will tell you what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll tell you what they want you to see, uh, what they want to see, what they want you to prepare. Um, so. Um, Sometimes people will send some uh, sides across, so maybe a couple of bits of script, some some scenes um, for you to, to have read through. Um, and then in the audition, they'll want you to read them. Um, or sometimes people want you to learn them as well. Um, so it's well worth um, get, uh, spending a lot of time in your prep of like, f um, you know, familiarising yourself with, with the text, with the context of of the project and things so um you'll maybe have to have to read through some sides or perform a monologue you've prepared or something like that um you maybe have to do a song um sometimes uh i have worked for people where it has been group auditions so you you you're in the room somewhere and um there are other actors auditioning with you right um, and yeah, so oh, sorry, I should probably say not every audition is in front of a lot of people. What what you'll usually find is you'll be in front of the director, um, potentially the producer, um, and um, if there's singing and music, maybe a musical director in there, and potentially the writer. You you don't normally get masses of people on a panel. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, if you're doing group auditions, then um, there's a in with other actors um, who are also going for the job. Usually those group auditions are almost like workshops. So they'll set you with tasks, with devising something together or um, moving together or something like that. And I think with those ones, it, it's, um, it's about seeing... Um, how you work and what you bring to a, a room as a team um and they can feel quite scary but i think the idea is to just see how you would work um it, should you get the job in the room um and um i've had the uh privilege of being on the other side being on the the side where the directors are and people cast in a production and something that's really stuck with me from doing that and I think also if you ever speak to any other directors or, or uh, you know people that are casting um we we want to see we want you to do well we re we like when you're stepping into that room there's always a fear there's always like oh I'm being judged or this is really yeah. scary um but I think to remind yourself that everybody just wants to see you do a good job um, and uh, you've already been called into that room because they know that you're good. Mm. So remembering that, like the reason you've got an audition is because they think you're good. The audition is about from their side going, do you fit in the team that we're creating? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, I think that's a really important learning curve for me when I was auditioning is that people just want to see you do the best and that's they it. They want you to succeed. Yeah, They do, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so that helps with eliminating that sort of fear side of it. It's obviously yeah. still a very nerve wracking thing to do. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's really helpful. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the process then with like, well, actually is, is there, is it always in person or are you doing some now online since COVID's happened? Like, is that changed auditions a bit? Yeah, so um, again, it varies, but I think since uh, since COVID, um, uh, there's been an acknowledgement of, do we need to make you travel halfway across the country for this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it depends what they're looking for and what they need, but um, the ability to do it on Zoom is is can be really great. Um, you know, it saves on uh, the cost of travel um, and um, and you, it saves on taking a full day away to go and do then and you can just be there for I will say auditions if it's not like a group workshop auditions they're probably about 20 minutes oh that's good that that is helpful with to hear with the cost of living crisis at the minute as well that's yeah. a really helpful thing isn't it so it, it really is um so I've done a variety of auditions recently that have that have been on zoom mm. um one thing when you're doing that I would just make sure that you've got a, a good setup okay uh, that you've got good wi-fi because the last thing you want is all the technology style side to sort of failure um, yeah which makes it more stressful for you. Um, so if you've got the ability to have a nice quiet space somewhere um, and um, and your Wi-Fi is good, then you should be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and maybe invest in a few little bits like like ring lights and things like yeah, that. Which you don't have you, to spend a lot of money on, do you? So. You don't. If you're able to, it's, it's great to sort of chip away at that kind of stuff. Like you mm. don't need to go in and get a full, um, you know, big whizzy studio going on like you can you can sort of chip away get a nice light make sure that your sound's good yes um and and th that's all they'll really want is to be able to see you to be able to hear you yeah okay um and then what happens in terms of can you be recalled does it do you always get recalled does it depend on again on the show um I, that that sort of aftermath I guess of you mm. knowing whether you're being cast or not what's that like yeah so again it'll vary on project it'll vary on company um you sometimes will get a recall um and um I think if you've potentially done a re um, if you've done your first audition online then potentially a recall would be in person yes because they maybe want to get a bit more see you know they want to they really want to sort of find out a little bit more about you and see what you do in person um but you won't always get a recall um because that's just not how that production is working um so um then they may just cast it from those first auditions right. um and um there is a move at the minute within the industry to um, let you know, <laughs> let yeah. you know either way. Um, but I will say not not everybody does that. Um, but, um, you know, if you're waiting and it's been quite a while, then I would say feel free to get in touch and just ask. Mm -hmm. um, um, and and then you'll you know hopefully find out but there is a move now to try and to try and let you know either way okay yeah that's good because like you say you just need to know your brain needs to be at a certain point of processing yeah. doesn't it and moving forward and knowing what you're doing and yeah, yeah. I can see that and knowing um, if you can say yes to another job where well, someone of said we'd love you <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's absolutely. maybe crossover yeah 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 of course yeah because you don't think of that dates might cross over in terms of yeah. projects that you're doing yeah of yeah. course yeah. um what about agents then do you think that's a vital part of of being an actor or do you think it's not um what's the pros and cons I guess of that so um it's uh obviously kind of a thing that you know an actor has an agent an agent is a great thing an agent um can um facilitate that negotiation of contracts with with people that you're working for uh, making sure that um you know you're being paid properly that you've got you your subsistence is paid if or your travel or whatever else are there 
they're a nice buffer between you and the people that you're working for in in negotiating what's best for you Mm. um, and handling sort of that admin side of it. Um, They will take a percentage. So they'll take like 10, 20% of of your earnings from that job. um, Mm. And that's essentially, you know, for them to do all the admin stuff. Um, They are great for... um, uh, getting you into other rooms as well um because i think there can be a tendency in the industry of uh companies um that um when they're looking for people for actors they will look at an agency that they trust an agency that they go okay the, the on these books i know I know they've got quality actors, um, so um, it can help you in that regard. If you are with an agent that's good, that that's recognised in the industry, then you know they'll they'll help get you into into different rooms. They also will find you jobs. They'll put you up for more things, um, yep. so that eases. Um, eases that admin side again from you. Eases a little bit of stress from like you having to day to day look for jobs apply for stuff they'll be like we've found this one we're putting you up for it um so that's really good um having said that uh i I, probably a rarity (laughs) um not speaking myself in a woo way but um I've I've never had an agent um, and I have been working in the industry for 11 years. Um, so I have done all that myself um, and I have, you know, done, done all that admin side, put myself up for jobs, done the contract side um, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's worked. <laughs> it's worked so far um, and it's, it's okay, but I, it is stressful at times um but uh but i will i i want to find an agent but i because i would like to find one that i think is a good partnership and i think that's an other another important thing from speaking to other actors again talking to your peers talking to what's your experience of your um with your agent do you feel supported by them do they work for you because some people want a relationship with an agent where you can ring them up and you can have a chat and you'll be like oh this 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 yeah other people don't want that other people want a much more um business transaction yes. relationship yeah. um and um it, it it's dependent i think upon you i would what i would say from my experience of not having an agent i am looking for an agent um recently is remember you you've got the agency as well you need to still feel in control of your career and what you're doing and you have choices Um, some people maybe don't have the best experience with some agents and they feel like forced into i put you up for this job you have to go for it have to do it have to do it have to do it um but other agents don't work like that it it really depends it really depends yeah okay um great um presumably each project's different as well in terms of time in terms of how how long you're with them for um can run anywhere i guess from weeks to months to years i guess yeah. uh yeah i it, again really varies on the project um i've done a project before that was meant to just be a three-week run um and then it ended up being a two and a half year job because (laughs) because it had done really well um and um or you might go and you might you might end up doing some nice new writing script readings which is just a day of work you Mm. know script in hand but you're working with with new material with directors with writers and other actors and that's just a day or you might book something that's like a six month tour or you might get some filming which is you know you're away for two weeks or just yeah. three days or whatever so it's yeah. a very um uh fluid and flexible career um it you know in in some regards like you, you you're not you're never certain on um what 
you committed to yeah um in in like a long term thinking um but you you can be here there all over the place and that is for me personally that's something I enjoy about it as well mm-hmm. as much as at, at certain points there will be stress from that but um at other points there's a there's a flexibility there's a fluidity with it which is quite nice and no day will ever be the same <laughs> yeah that's good and and bad I guess and you've got to have that strength hasn't you haven't you and then that resilience um which I guess leads to my final question on like your top tips like Mm. have you got anything that you'd say you know that that you think not and it doesn't have to even be like a a tip but like something that somebody would need to think about in order to go into this career in order to go into this career um sorry I put you on the spot (laughs) no 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 it's great I think there's so much I think um I think being kind to yourself is uh one of the priorities in this um because you know it's um it's one of those careers that essentially you are constantly applying and interviewing for jobs yes um so um being kind to yourself is really important um being um a, a nice steady confidence in yourself is great as well I think when you um going for auditions um Brian Cranston was a great influence to me <laughs> um he um he speaks as an actor about a moment in his life where he he it, it all switched that stress of getting a job I need to get a job when I go into an audition it's about getting the job He says, no, approach it. Your audition is about you're already doing the job. You're walking in because you as an actor, that's your job. You're just going in to show them what you do, the work that you do. So there's a steady confidence with that, I think. Um, And and then walking away from that and going, I did everything I can. The rest is up to to other people. It's out of my hands. and I think another great thing is um, uh, finding that community, finding people in the industry that you can talk to, whether it's fellow actor friends, whether it's, um, you know, companies around that offer um, acting gyms or anything. We do that with Middle Child. We have an acting gym. So when you're, you're not working, you can you can go and keep keep on top of your craft keep confident with it um and um keep exploring keep creative I think keeping creative is really important as well um because you may have periods of time where you don't you don't work for six months nine months a year or whatever it is um and then you'll suddenly get a job and blowing off those cobwebs really quickly to be that creative self that you are in the room can be can be quite challenging when you've not been doing it for a while so I think keeping yourself creative um throughout those periods is is a really important important thing as well for yourself brilliant great well I think that's all of my questions fabulous Um, thank you very much for for speaking to me today thank you and um yeah good luck with your continued beautiful wonderful career in acting Mm -hmm. thank you very much